Welcome back to session five. If you've listened to uh, Psalm 47 by Gibbons, you'll know that God is the great king of all the earth. And that we're to sing praises with understanding or sing a psalm with insight. Today, we're looking at the question of discipline. Discipleship. Daily discipleship. Daily learning from the Most High through the conversations that we find in the Psalms and, of course, from other sources. So, how will we find the discipline to read? It is difficult to take time from our busy schedules. I've uh, sometimes looked upon Psalm 5 and the promise to uh, arrange mourning for the Lord as a problem when I consider the rebuke implied by Psalm 6. But do it. Have a chair available at home or in your office where a quiet 10 minutes can be spent with the Psalter open to work through it in small doses. As Debussy said, music is the space between the notes. So listen to the spaces between the words. And ask your questions, any question. And address God with complete honesty. Let your difficulties be known. The Psalms are immediate, they're personal. They alternate between third and first person. Job in his speeches works in this way also. Those are the only two places in the scripture where I have seen this particular style of prayer. And look what God does as portrayed in the Psalms. Psalm 146 has been sticking in my mind for the last three to six months because of the 11 consecutive actions in that psalm. And it says, I will sing psalms to my God while I still exist. And happy is the one who has the God of Jacob for its help. The one, the God who keeps truth forever, who is doing judgment for the oppressed, who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who releases the prisoners and gives sight to the blind and consoles the disturbed and loves the righteous and shelters the guest and restores the orphan and widow and subverts the way of the wicked. That subversion is for us too. For even if we don't want to identify with the wicked, I think perhaps we might do that sometimes. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, Zion, from generation to generation. There we have the reign of God, just like we have in Psalm 47. And what do we do when we pray the Psalms? Psalm 25 begins, I will lift up myself to you. That's a very good start. All the Psalms lend themselves to prayer for us, for our families, for trouble spots in the world, for whatever emerges within the mind when you're reading them. The Psalms are the means whereby the one who has ascended, the anointed, can teach those who would obey his command to follow him. They form such followers into a community that knows the loving kindness of the covenant and also knows how to apply it. 
The Psalms are a means of building the city of God. Do you remind yourselves of the First Corinthians? He says, do you not know that you will judge angels? Thrones, dominations, principalities, all the governing aspects of this world are to be under our judgment, to bind their kings in chains, their nobles with fetters of iron. When you read a psalm, think how it applies to the troubled areas of the world. Listen to the news and pray a psalm for the protagonists. We should have a little more time uh, for the exercise today and can actually read these psalms together. Um, it's curious to me that after the opening three laments of book two, we have the uh, marriage ceremony, the, the great matter that uh, the psalmist sings about. And then following that, we have three psalms leading to uh, a vision of the city of God in Psalm 48. This particular psalm is closely related to a second poem uh, on the city of God in um, Book 3, Psalm 87. So we'll read these psalms together and think about um, how they give us a vision for prayer and how we can be and build the city of God, recognizing um, how the gospel fits into one word, which is in Psalm 46. The Lord of hosts is with us, Emmanuel, God with us. I also want to point out the wonderful uh, meaning of the name Chagall, uh, whose paintings we have been considering uh, in this uh, in this course. Chagall means consort, the wife, husband, or companion, in particular the spouse of the reigning monarch. So we're in the city, we are to become as if we live in the city and we as church are the bride of the reigning monarch Christ who was raised from the dead. So we look first at Psalms 46, 47, and 48. I've listed on the right hand side some of the words that are shared by all three of these Psalms. Uh, a word me'od meaning literally much, but I've applied it in a couple of different words uh, in 46 and 47. Um, the earth repeats repeatedly and the root for kingdom or king. Um, so keep an eye out for those and also the root uh, for holy, kadosh. And there are other words that are shared just by um, two of the Psalms taken two at a time. And finally, uh, although this may be kind of hard to read because there's a lot of detail, uh, here are the words that occur in Psalms 48 and 87, or at least selected words. Um, the city, the hill, the holy, Zion, made known, here, there, the theme of giving birth and being born, um, that it will be established, who will reestablish it, that we recount about it, we, we talk about it, uh, the word for this and the word for himself. Um, there's quite a gap between 48 and 87. It's practically a whole a book and a half worth of Psalms. So we're approaching the city first in book two, and then we approach it again in book three, just before the last two Psalms, 88 and 89, where we record the utter failure of human government within the history of the Davidic kingdom. Our homework for next week is Psalm 96, and to read two Psalms a day. 
and also to bring a performance of a psalm to the next session. Music, perhaps, or poetry, a paraphrase, or visual arts, or drama, whatever comes to you during the week. And remember to read and sing the songs with insight. <laughs>